In this video, we are going to look at the organization and some basic terms and definitions related to the periodic table. Currently, there are 118 known elements in the universe. And what the periodic table does is it takes all of those elements and puts them together in a uh, very organized manner. So what we'd like to do is look at some of the basic um, uh, way that these elements are organized and some of the uh, terms that go along with the periodic table. So firstly, the periodic table is organized in, of course, horizontal rows and vertical columns. The horizontal rows are called periods and the vertical columns are called groups. <clears throat> there are seven periods so if we look at our periodic table, we can see uh, period number one contains hydrogen and helium, period number two, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, all the way to neon. Here's uh, period number three. Uh, period number four goes all the way from uh, potassium all the way to krypton. And so the periods are basically arranged in order of increasing atomic number with hydrogen uh, having atomic number one, helium an atomic number two, etc., etc. The groups are the 18 vertical columns and they're numbered a couple of different ways. There's the international system which numbers them one through 18 and the more confusing but unfortunately the one we tend to use more often, the US system um, labels them with a number and a letter. Uh, in the groups, the elements that tend to have similar chemical properties and physical properties tend to be located in the same group. So for the groups, you can see here, this is um, group 1A, contains hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, all the way down to francium. Uh, group 2, or 2A, uh, you can see here from beryllium all down, way down to radon. And then in the middle, we'll talk more about the transition metals in a minute, but these are uh, group 3 or 3B in the U.S. system, and those go all the way over uh, to group 2B <clears throat> or 12 in the international system. And then we go back up here where we start with uh, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, all the way down to 8A in the U.S. numbering system or group 18 in the international system. So in addition to the uh, periods and groups, we can also divide the periodic table into uh, main group elements, transition metals, and inner transition metals. Uh, the main group elements are columns 1A through 2A and 3A through 8A. So the main group elements would contain group 1A and 2A, so the first two groups right here. And then also, you can see over here, group uh, 3A all the way to 8A. So uh, over here and over here are the main group elements. The uh, transition metals and inner transition metals are basically the ones in between the main group elements. The transition metals are from 3B all the way to 2B. So they would be this uh, block of elements which tend to be metals right in here. And then the um, transition metals are uh, group 14 groups in between group 3B and 4B. Those are called the lanthanides and actinides. So the lanthanides and actinides, you can see down here at the bottom, and they have um, the lanthanides begin with atomic number 58. So that's going to fit right in between here. And then the actinides uh, go from atomic number 90 to atomic number 103. And so those are going to fit right in here. <clears throat> Generally, the lanthanides and actinides are kind of separated out, and that's not really any special reason. It's just to make the periodic table more compact. If you added the lanthanides and actinides in there, the periodic table would look something like this. Here you can see um, the 
lanthanides and actinides are inserted into their proper position uh, in the transition metals. And so that just tends to make the periodic table a little wider and uh, harder to put into a textbook or onto a poster. So generally those are uh, left out or kind of left uh, to the bottom here. <clears throat> the periodic table also divides uh, the elements uh, based kind of on their properties. It divides them into metals, nonmetals, and semi-metals, also called metalloids. Uh, the metals are tend to be on the left side of the periodic table, with the exception of hydrogen. The nonmetals are on the right side of the periodic table. And the semi-metals lie in the boundary between the metals and the nonmetals. So here, again, is a different view of a periodic table. The metals are all over here, kind of in the yellowish color. And of course, the lanthanides and actinides are also all metals. <clears throat> the nonmetals uh, are over here on the right side, all of these guys, including group 8A. Those are nonmetals. And then the metalloids tend to be the metals, uh, or excuse me, the elements that fall in the region between those uh, nonmetals and metals. So often you'll see kind of this zigzag red line here, or black line on a periodic table. That separates the metals from the nonmetals, and uh, those elements right along there tend to be the metalloids. <clears throat> in general, metals tend to be uh, shiny, malleable, hard. Uh, they are good conductors of electricity. Of course, they tend to be solids at room temperature. Things like iron, gold, copper, sodium are examples of metals. Nonmetals uh, do not conduct heat or electricity very well. They tend to be gases or liquids at room temperature. Uh, when they are in the solid form, they tend to form very brittle solids that are uh, not easily molded or shaped. So things like oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, nitrogen, of course, are good examples of nonmetals. Uh, metalloids uh, tend to have some characteristics of both. Um, they <clears throat> tend to be very good uh, semiconductors, so they conduct electricity and are good insulators. And the properties of metalloids tend to make them very good at thing, uh, uses uh, in things like computer chips, like silicon chips. Silicon is a, a metalloid, and it um, is often used to make a lot of the uh, computer chips that we use. Now, <clears throat> for some of the uh, groups, instead of calling them group 1A or 2A, some, some of these groups have very uh, more common names. So for example, group 1A uh, is also called the alkali metals, uh, with the exception of hydrogen. It includes lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium. Uh, these uh, elements in group 1A, the alkali metals, they tend to have very similar chemical and physical properties. Uh, they tend to be very reactive. If you put them in water, they're extremely reactive. Um, <clears throat> and when they put are put in water, they tend to form a basic or alkali solution, hence the name. Uh, group 2A are also called the alkaline earth metals. Um, again, these um, elements tend to have very similar chemical properties. They tend to react very similar to each other and have uh, physical properties uh, that are also very similar. When put into uh, water, they also form a basic or alkaline solution. <clears throat> and so that's originally how they were identified and why they're called alkaline uh, earth metals or alkali metals. Uh, over here on the right side, over in group 8A, these are called the noble gases, sometimes called inert gases. Uh, hydrogen, uh, excuse me, uh, helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon. Uh, these elements, again, share very similar chemical and physical properties. These guys are very unreactive. They tend not to react with things, and hence they're called noble or inert gases. Uh, groups, uh, group 7A are called the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Uh, these tend to... Uh, have, again, very similar chemical and physical properties. Uh, they tend to form diatomic species. So, for example, fluorine exists as uh, F2. Uh, chlorine exists as Cl2 in nature. Uh, so we generally refer to group 7A as the halogens. 
and then group 6a, these are called the calcogens. Um, oxygen, sulfur, selenium, uh, these guys, uh, again, <clears throat> share similar chemical and physical properties. And uh, so sometimes you'll hear those referred to as the calcogens. So those are some of the basic terms and definitions um, that apply to our periodic table. We want to be very familiar with those terms because uh, the periodic table is such a fundamental tool in chemistry uh, that we want to be sure we appreciate how it's arranged and some of the uh, terms that are used uh, when discussing the periodic table.